Hello guys and welcome to the channel. This is Lag. If you see the little bear on the screen, I'm basically the guy behind it. And my channel talks about anime and gaming news. And as you can see, I want to react to this video. Um, I hope I ain't butchering his name. Eddie Indiemon. Check out his channel right here. Once I'm done, I power will have links to his um, channel. Um, but I was just sitting here and I was just reviewing and I'm like Now I've been hearing this controversy about this thing called sweet baby ink and going down that rabbit hole But before we begin if you are interested in the channel or anything like that You will see a QR code right here on the screen. You can use that to check out my channel or Check out my twitch when I'm streaming games or look into some of the merch on the channel I have stuff like this in the making with Streamlabs but with all that hoo ha out the way, let's begin and see what this video is talking about. All right, let me hit the full screen and let it begin. Sindimion, and there's been an explosion of information circulating all over Twitter and other places when it comes to the sweet, stinky, putrid baby and their stain upon the masses of video games. I figured for now we'd be good, there couldn't possibly be more. But like Goku achieving new levels of Super Saiyan, this story keeps getting more powerful and insane as time goes on. Now it turns out we may have found a connection to Sweet Baby's Inception, and it connects in a really bizarre way that you need to see in order to believe. Beyond this, the founder of the baby has been found to call white male players as picky babies. And Suicide Squad, which has obviously failed and imploded in front of Warner Bros. Discovery's eyes, has decided that not only are players wrong, but Suicide Squad is Warner's future. It's a lot, so let's keep this simple to be- That's probably why you get the baby logo. Basically it's a crying white male, or just people complaining from the gaming industry. I mean... The reason why we're complaining maybe is because of, I mean, obvious things. A AKA, if I'm assuming what they're doing, they're basically hijacking games to make it in their image. And I'm going to watch a little bit more, so I'm not basically assuming. But I'm looking at this little <laughs> thing that says, Circus Disposed plus Woke Founder Blast, White Male Players. Yeah, I mean, I'm just using common sense at this point. To begin with, those weird connections and how this may have all started. So far, what we know for sure is that Sweet Baby Inc. was founded in 2018 by Kim Belair. And it's a consulting company that was created to boost marginalized voices within video games through narrative, script dialogue, quest design, and much more. Also, I did love God of War. I, that's one of my favorite games, but... I, well, I haven't even go finish that. What do you call it? Uh, like a free expansion pack or something there. Like but anyway. Sometimes it's more of a subtle endeavor, and sometimes it sticks out like a sore thumb. Like having a black girl in God of War Ragnarok who's apparently from a race of giants that originates from Norse mythology within a very white part of the world. As in every single Norse villain within Ragnarok is white, every citizen is white, and even Atreus, whose mother is a giant, is also white. But randomly, for no reason at all, there just happens to be a black girl in this same giant race. Of course it was done for representational purposes and likely was pushed by Sweet Baby from the get-go in order to ensure there was some- I will say I'm not sure about that point. Reason is because if you play the game, well, spoilers ahead, F keyword. Um, the thing is, in the game, you did have different giants. Like, if you've seen from the first to the second one that were killed or attacked by Thor, they all, all wasn't the same built. It was like the big ice guy. There was the, um, the big, basically the mom or grandma of the lady on the screen. Like, there was different groups of giants included don't forget technically you're trying to be lore specific low key is the basically the dad of 
Um, I forgot his name, the dog. Fierner, Ferner, I can't say his name right, but the dog who basically starts all the shebang. And then you have the big snake, Jormongu or whatever, the big giant snake. So, I mean, I get it. Like you want to say it's all Norse mythology, but you can't be 100% accurate. And especially in the game where you have different... The giants were basically like a mod, a mosh pit of just a whole bunch of different people. It is what it is. The only I, he, I mean, he would have hinted it was it made Odin look like a old white guy that's behind scenes doing stuff. You know what I mean? That's the, if you want to say that. But everything else to me was kind of on point. Majority of it. Some diversity in the game. But we all know that if God of War was, for example, in the future having a game based on African mythology, that they would absolutely not make any of that mythology or its characters randomly into a white person, because that would be culturally tone deaf. Well, I have a video <laughs> talking about IGN complaining about Resident Evil 5 and the African zombies being killed, which I still don't comprehend, because if... If you're in Africa and a zombie apocalypse, I'm assuming the zombies will be black, but that's another video or topic. I'll link that in the comments or description if anybody interested. But I get this point, but the thing is, if you're looking at the, like you're trying to be 100% lore specific, Vikings did travel, pillage, did a whole bunch of things in their past. So there's no saying what. What races they encountered, etc., or, or messed with, whatever. But I get the concept. Majority of them should have been white, which most of it was. The only thing I'm getting is the giants in the video game. Video game lore were like a mixed bunch of people across the board. And races to do so. But it's totally fine if it's done within a Norse mythological setting, just ignore the fact that Norse mythology is intrinsically connected to Norwegian people, who are predominantly blue-eyed and blonde hair. Don't use logic or reasoning to understand this, just shut your mouth and consume product like a good consumer instead. Because that's what these consultant groups want us all to do anyway. Sweet Baby has obviously left their stink all over the gaming industry already, but now it gets way weirder than before. Ever wonder how a company like Sweet Baby even comes to exist in the first place? And who else is a part of this company? How do these things even come to be? Well, let's take a journey together, friends, and let's go learn how the sausage... So now we're getting to the point I wanted to see, because... I mean, there might be more to it, so don't kill me. Might be other things in the background at work, like other videos people know. So, I'm just reacting to this video. I wanted to see more hint, because I've seen some other stuff, and people were saying, hey, they're all linked. And, like, I was going to, like, I just got a computer, and I was going to start playing Steam games. And now <laughs> I've seen something about basically Sweet Baby Detective, whatever. But it's making more sense once I'm researching it. I mean, I just, I'm just hoping that they don't don't jack up every video game. But this guy right here has been doing a lot of research, so right now I'm trusting his opinion on the matter. You get some aid, shall we? So since this huge story has been blowing up, people have been digging all over, and one of the discoveries is another company with an equally weird name in the form of Baby Ghosts. According to his website, to Baby <laughs> Ghosts is a grant and peer accelerator company that helps marginalized individuals create their studios into a reality. They further explain what they do in their own words here, which says, Baby Ghosts and Gamma Space Collaborative Studio have teamed up to offer a grant of $25,000 in a two-part six-month program of tailored mentorship with a community of game-making peers. We offer the space and the tools to develop a studio that doesn't need to adhere to inequitable systematic norms. Sounds nice and simple enough so far, right? What other services do they give, you may be asking? Before he goes down, when I heard them broke down and he said systematic norms, like what is they referring to? Because that's when I started having red flags in my head, like what systematic norms? I know people love to say, and I'm... A black person FYI that there is systematic racism is there 
Maybe, maybe not. But my thing is, it's usually the people who are operating that cause the chaos. It's not the system. It's more like you have somebody in position who is causing the chaos or the discrimination, not the whole organization. So, for example, if I'm getting hired, that person may not like me. That doesn't mean the company itself is building a pyramid to stop me, if that makes sense. Now, if you're telling me that there's equal opportunity with the resumes, etc., and I'm just not being picked, that means I'm just not picked. As simple as that. So, to say to fight systematic norms, what you're gonna, you're basically creating the same system. If you don't, if you think about it, if you're trying to say, well, the norms is a white male is hired. Guess what? We're gonna hire nothing but black males. I mean, if you hire a whole bunch of people who just not qualified or not capable of doing a job, ta-da! But let me stop talking because this is probably why we have some crappy games or something else going on. Well, according to them, they offer things like helping you with team development, project management, publicity, and professional connections. That last one, by the way, is very, very important. And as they say, the more they engage with you, the more they can support you. But what this really means is the more they get to know you as a game developer, and if you have the right credentials, as in you're a person of color, you identify yourself using other buzz terms like maybe disabled or they them pronouns and so on. Then this baby ghost consulting team will then learn, oh, you're one of the good ones, a sweet baby, if you will. And then they'll use their connections to get other like-minded individuals to help and maybe even work with you on your game who also identify with similar buzz term words as well. And if you want that $25,000 grant to help you achieve your dreams, you kind of have to also be able to identify within these other labels as well. Firstly, you have to be Canadian, so sorry Americans, but... <laughs> I didn't want to... <laughs> When I saw her Canadian, I'm like, it made sense. I'm not saying all Canadians, but they are very more liberal. Like, there are certain places where you know it's 100% liberal. And when you hear the policies and stuff over there, it is very liberal. Now, is that bad? No. But the problem is you create this type of environments where people are just basically, I don't know, it sounds... Like they're making safe environments for them to just create the same environment they were trying to be safe from. Damn, that like, ugh. I should have some more coffee, but like you can't say you want to create a safe environment and then not allow certain groups and then not call it the same. It's the, you know, it's the same thing you're doing. If I create a group and say only black people, guess what I just did? discriminate against everything else so yeah now trying to create opportunities are just you could just make tell the people like hey i want to make a game showing more of these people that don't mean you have to rule out everybody else to help make the game but anyway let me but it's that second point which says you are a member of an unrepresented group in the video game industry so, if you're a white hetero male, sorry, you are not eligible for this grant. What's that? Another thing. How do you say an unrepresented group in gaming? That's a lot of areas. I can say ball men in gaming is... I mean, we don't know this. I'm sort of ball. It's not just underrated in gaming. Do I get part of this? I can go down the list, you know. Some, I mean... I'm not going to say it, but do you, well, my channel's new, so I ain't trying to say the wrong thing to get canceled yet. I ain't that big, but you get my drift. There's a lot of categories I can go down and say, this is not represented. This not represented. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You were born a white male against your own will? Have you ever considered that maybe your parents are racist for simply existing? Well, too bad white hetero male game developer, be gone with you. Your kind isn't allowed here in these parts, but if you're a person of color or pander in any way, shape, or form, well, well, congratulations, you just got accepted into the Baby Ghost program. 
But then it gets weirder because it turns out that Baby Ghost is actually funded by another company which is called Weird Ghosts. A lot of bizarre names for these companies I know. So, what's Weird Ghosts you may be asking? Well, according to their website, Weird Ghosts is an impact fund for... So at this rate, if I see a baby or a ghost, it's something included. <laughs> it's like, at this rate, they ain't made it obvious. And the only thing I hate about these things, because now it's like, if you play a game and just say you try to have a main lead, black person, whatever the case may be, everybody's going to assume it's um, D.I. pick. Like, like, I like the Miles Morales, Spider-Verse Spider, Spider -verse movies, etc. Pan Black Panther movie, etc. Now, guess what? When people watch it, like, say they made a video game of Killmonger, I don't know, whatever case may be. This is what's gonna, like, poo-poo the game. Because at the end of the day, everyone's gonna assume Sweet Baby or some compilation like that had an influence in the game. Instead of people just enjoying a great game, like, at this point, you might as well make every game have a custom character creator so you don't have to worry about this <sighs> it just sucks because i'd rather just have a great game and however the person wanted the character to be i'm fine with just don't force no stupid stupidness into it i just want a good game for studios led by underrepresented founders across Canada, we support video game studios with studio development training catalytic investments and community in order to build strong, impactful teams of underrepresented makers who are shaping the future of video games. So Weird Ghost is a bigger company that through other shell companies like Baby Ghosts use their influence to help what they call underrepresented groups begin working in video games. The site even says in their own words that, Weird Ghosts invests in founders who want to build profitable, impact-oriented studios with a long-term vision and commitment to equitable worker-centric structures. There's that keyword there, by the way, impact. They want whatever it is you're making to change how things are done. That's the key initiative here and what I want you to zero in as we go along. So it's not enough that you're from an underrepresented group or that you go by whatever pronouns that you do, but you also need to be politically and socially aligned with these ghost companies in order to receive your grant. Then you are overseen by these groups to ensure that what you're making is pushing what they want to see. Okay, very cool. So then you're probably asking, who the hell is controlling these companies then? Who are the people behind this? Well, one of them is this person named Jenny Robinson Faber, who according to their bio on the Weird Ghost website says... Jenny, she, is a queer white settler community arts advocate and organizer, software developer, and leader in the IDM industry for- Did I just hear right? They said settler? Like, you know, how are you a settler? I mean, unless I'm missing, how old are you? Like, <laughs> that has as in a- you know what, let me just hit the play button. Over 15 years, she co-founded the video games arts nonprofits DMG Toronto with Cecily Carvey and Alex Litch and Gamma Space Collaborative Studio with Henry Faber and Dan Tolivier. In 2015, she joined the board of the Toronto Media Arts Centre and became its operations director in 2017. Yeah, you read that right, fellas. They unironically refer to themselves as white settlers in their public professional biography. You can smell the white liberal woman guilt from here, but surely that is a one in- After hearing that, it makes sense, but I would just- oh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, I didn't expect to hear that. That's when you're gone too far, like, if you think about it, you're saying it's like, settler, like- You're not a settler, like, you didn't take over the area, you didn't do none of these stuff, in any way- you wouldn't have been in Canada, technically, if it wasn't for people just colonizing, migrating, and settling in the area. You would have still been somewhere else. But anyway. <sighs> and done expression, right? Well, who's the other founder? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Their name is Eileen Mary Holoka, who, according to their bio... Eileen, they, she, is a queer and disabled white settler living on Treaty 1 territory in Winnipeg. 
They are a writer, game dev, and community organizer advocate with a background in theater, games, poetry, and health communications. They have a PhD in communication studies from Concordia University and have published extensively within and outside of academia. They are a co-founder of both Weird Ghosts and Baby Ghosts with Jenny Robinson Faber. As well as a member of Gamma Space Collaborative Studio, they have also worked as the general manager of Infinite Ammo. Oh, so the White Settler bio description isn't just a one and done sort of thing. You could almost say that it's a mandatory identification term that's designed to easily triangulate and point out who the white people are amidst the crowd here, which is just wow, dude, wow. The inner hatred of white liberal women is truly one of the greatest jokes of the month. Yeah, like, if you don't know by now, that's kind of like... Like, most time you hear people who are in this group, they fit a certain description, which is sad to say. And it's like... And it's so, like, they speak so loud that people, like, this say for me, I'm like, I'm not interested. I just want a good video game. Well, no, no, I know what you want. No, I just want a good video game. I could deal with God of War, but... Good for, like, Suicide Squad to me was bad. Like, why? And I'm a fan of Superman and DC and all these cartoon characters. And I knew already, like, oh, my God, here we go again. And luckily, I didn't pay the money. I just was watching a review, and I'm like, yeah, this is trash. Like, you could just smell it in the air like it was just bad. But <sighs> they're the responsibility of these games. Yeah, I'm... I'm going to have to just start. <laughs> Glad I got a PC. I can start finding something else to play. Modern era. These are the sort of people who likely think it's great that people burn down cities in protest. They're likely also the same kinds of people who would get mugged in broad daylight and refuse to give a description of the person in fear of being racist. Also, find it very interesting that Weird and Baby Ghost both work to prop up marginalized voices within the gaming industry and refuse to work with white people in general. Yet, unironically, these companies are controlled and created by two white people themselves. It's like the ultimate white savior complex of a company come to life. It's truly incredible how much these people hate something that they can't change about themselves. Imagine referring to yourself as a white settler, dude. Holy crap, you can't make this stuff up. It's because of people like this that we're in this mess to begin with, but I don't know if you caught what was said there, so let's circle back for a second. What was the name of that second founder? Eileen Holoka. Huh, Holoka. Where have we heard that name before? Also, Eileen is in control of another company called Infinite Ammo. What the hell is that? Well, if you go look that up, it turns out Infinite Ammo was started by a man named Alec Holoka. And if you look deeper, you then realize that the man who started Infinite Ammo is actually the same Alec Holoka who ended their life after Zoe Quinn accused them of abuse without any proof. This well darn this got dark quick good lord first of all it's sad that someone passed away and then or was accused of something and he ended up passing away and then oh lord I went from conspiracy to like, boy I feel like some ID channel conspiracy <laughs> thing. Shout out to this guy for this great research, because good lord. Like, at this moment, I should have got some popcorn. or just been quiet and watched this whole thing. Same Alec Holoka, who ended himself after websites like Polygon and others, blasted and ruined his reputation and name because of the whole Believe All Women narrative. And then, once he died, his company, Infinite Ammo, was absorbed by his sister Eileen and using all of these connections was able to create weird and baby ghosts. So the man who died because of the baseless accusations of Zoe Quinn, who is pretty much the progenitor of Gamergate, is having his legacy used to fund and create startup companies that politically and commercially erase people like him from the industry, all in the name of virtue signaling. This is some Jack Reacher level connections we're talking here. I feel like I'm going to be sniped through my window by a they them assassin just for talking about this stuff. But there it is. Hey, look, I don't disagree with it. But obviously, here we're just like, oh my lord. At this rate, they hijacked the sister. 
got her on their side and just created all this chaos. Now, I'm not saying all this is true. Just, I know it's allegedly, but if it's any any form of truth, which the strings are connecting, this is some crazy stuff. And then it doesn't shock me because sometimes when people want their agenda spoken loud, they do some dirt. And here you go. Now, Stuff like this is weeding him out. I won't be surprised. You check his comment section, Twitter, whatever. He probably got a lot of hate because he is posing something. So, it just kind of proving more is something there. It is, fellas, right in front of you. The progenitors of Sweet Baby and the transformation of the video games industry is intrinsically tied directly to the very same man whose death was caused by Gamergate itself. Then Sayil, who also does YouTube, ended up posting some screenshots on Twitter, so let's go look at those now. And if you look here, well, well, look who it is. It's Chris Kendred who said, So glad to be a part of this cohort. That's right, the narrative designer at Sweet Baby is tied to Weird Ghosts as well. And oh look, it's even the same Baby Ghost icon there in the same infographic where Weird Ghost celebrates the seven studios that I'm just curious, what's up with the baby? Like, everything has a baby icon or ghost icon or something icon. It's like, it's just, uh, yeah. Just looking at the screen, you can see the relations. Like, 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 They helped launch. And one of them is there as plain as day, Sweet Baby Inc. Then Weird Ghost was founded saying in public that their mission is to remake the industry. And there's another image where Infinite Ammo, which is again created by the now deceased Alec Holoka, is the minority investor in startups like Weird and Baby Ghost, which is now, as you know, the reason why Sweet Baby Inc. exists to begin with. So they're not only politically aligned, they are quite literally, down to their DNA, the same thing. Sweet Baby Inc., Weird Ghost, Baby Ghost, Infinite Ammo, Gamergate, Alec Holoka, Eileen Holoka, Zoe Quinn, all of it. It's all done and made by the same group of people. Are you convinced yet that video games as a medium have been infiltrated by activists? Or do you need more proof? Well, let's go to the Game Developers Conference where kids... No, at this rate, I'm convinced. <laughs> it's like, it's... Like, you can tell when you look at the signs and bear fruit, like, certain decisions in game is, like, why this is here. Like, I'm playing FF7, and I'm seeing some stuff. I'm, like, like out the way story missions and stuff. You're, like, come on. And not including, like, Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man with the Miles Morales. Like, certain missions, I'm, like, why is this here? And then that's the thing that makes it obvious. It's, like, there's nothing that's part of the thing, like... The God of War one, I I leave it there, but you could tell like certain ones like missions like they made sure you did it to see the diversity a hundred percent or whatever they want to push down your face. Kim Belair, the founder of Sweet Baby, who might I add, fits the bill to a T in terms of what Weird Ghost looks for in someone they invest in was talking on stage about how her vision for her company works to change the game industry, as Weird Ghost puts it. So, this clip is from her GDC talk a few years ago, around the time when Sweet Baby was first founded. It's a little bit of a longer clip, however, it's worth watching for context, so let's sit down, get comfortable, and peer into what Sweet Baby aims to do, shall we? And so I want to put on that, like, very mercenary hat for a second and talk about the way that we decide how we're going to sell the art that we make, and how we're going to approach the did she say mercenary hat? Like, what are you, a gun for hire? Like, good lord. I already stand. <laughs> yep, she over here doing, she got a mission. Like, why would you say mercenary hat for her? Like, that's already starting off with me something. But anyway, let's see what she got to say. The audiences that we make it for. Because I think so often when people like us get told, you know, from higher ups or from society at large, this isn't what players want. It's not a conversation about demographics, sorry, content. It's a conversation about demographics. And I think that in our industry and in so many creative industries, if you want to look at film and television and any art form, we start treating our core demographics as a fixed and static value, something that does not want to change and something that is locked in place. So despite like the changing face of audiences, despite the 
changing face of conferences like this one, we still look at our core demographics and say, okay, they're white, cis, hetero males. And we cater almost exclusively to them. And the problem is that we don't just cater to them like, you know, here, here's something that we think you'll enjoy. We cater to them the way that we cater to like a picky baby. We feel Okay. Now it makes sense why they got baby icons. That's their like probably inside joke. But I think she's this is gonna like it's mind boggling to me. Like if you don't see what's happening like with Disney and some other companies who are trying to force feed ideals, like look how much money they're losing. It makes it worse. The movies could have been easily great with female characters or whatever characters like you're assuming nobody wants to see but it's kind of obvious like if you're selling something that's more played by a group of people like not even just going by race just say more males play video games now that doesn't say zero females play games but if your main cash cow like say 70 percent 60 percent plays that are male, then you should make games for them, or more tailored for them. Now, don't mean you can't make a a, a game that's I don't know female focus, which has been shown in past not to sell well. So you have to be prepared for that loss. But there's a reason why Disney is in hot water right now. It's because they keep trying to force feed an idea that's not working. It makes it worse. Most time when you do that, the story sucks. Like, let's be real. Like, Miss Marvel. Yeah, I can go down the list. Internals. Externals. Whatever you call them. Yeah, that died real quick. Like, even Black Panther 2 did, in my mind, better than some of them. But still, when you have force feed ideas, it just kills the movie. Like, dead on arrival. Because guess what? Everyone's going to be turned off. And now seeing this, I see why some of these games just had these bad ideas off rip. And then, like, why do you think the, the norm of a white, cis, male, whatever, is having a bad opinion? Of, basically, you can't make a game for them. If most of the industry is like that, then you should at least make the game accessible for everybody or decently in the middle. I don't know, I just... I'm just trying to understand the logic and then my brain is just like slowly frying in the process. Let me just stop. Because I'm just trying to think, if you're trying to make money, what are you doing? But anyway, well, they're probably not trying to make money. Feed them the same thing that we know that they love and we keep on feeding it. We're like, here you go. We, you love it. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So that then when they get anything else, they react as a picky baby would, which is be like, oh no, thank you. I do not want this. And we've actually done this so long that what we're doing is creating an entire nation of picky babies and they make us scared to deviate from what we actually want to do. Just in case these picky babies don't want to play our games. It's not that, it's just the games you make suck. Like, let's be real. Some of the games just don't hit well. And that's across the board. Like, you can make a game for a group you thought was going to hit and it doesn't disconnect it just is what it is but the fact is i'm gonna play a game like for example some people are not into elden ring but guess what elden ring is not tailoring to nobody you play that game you know it's going to be what it is and it can go down the list look at hell divers that wasn't made for nobody it was just a game made and there you go i mean i, I didn't play power world but hey somebody liked it it was popular now look at stella blade I just like the game because it reminds me of a like Devil May Cryers type game or Nero Automa or a game where I can hack and slash and have some fun. That's the way I look at it. Or like a Sekro. But you know how it well, they might think that game's be called that game is tailored to males who just want to see a booty or something. I don't know. And We've made a lot of progress, obviously, like I don't say this to completely go like, just give up, we've, <laughs> we've screwed it. Um, so I wanna do better than this because, and I, like, I don't 
say that to be like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna dismiss all the hate and the abuse in our communities. But I do like to imagine that when we look at uh, white guys, and there's several of you here, um, I think that when we look at you, we say, okay, you can't possibly enjoy this. But I think they want also, and maybe you want also, to experience new and different stories. I think we need to step out of this rule that like white men can enjoy fantasy worlds, aliens, sci-fi, monsters, anything, so long as it's through a lens that looks exactly like them. Because if that's the kind of person that we're always gonna to cater to, you're never going to innovate. You're never going to change things. You're just gonna keep feeding the picky baby. And we cannot continue to try to create art under a system that is going to bar innovation for fear of a picky baby throwing a tantrum. Hey, maybe we can invite white dudes to play as other people and experience different things through someone else's eyes. And if they don't like it, we have to start thinking we're not losing, they're losing, and we're losing because we're gonna let them stand in the way of our progress and our innovation. And I think that we need to stop thinking that our like, core marketing demographics have to define the exact demographics of our playable characters and of our cast. And instead, we start to have... So, I think she's kind of missing the point. Like, if you want to make a game and say, like, hey, I want a black main character, female character, whatever character, the game still needs to be good. And on top of that, most people will play the game. Look at Kratos. Like... Is Kratos a white male, black male, whatever, or someone from a different region, whatever the case may be? No one cares because at the end of the day, everybody cares about the character himself and his gameplay. Now, I can go down the list. Like, I'm not trying to make a like a argument. I'm just stating some point. People don't really care as long as the game is great. And regardless who the character is or whoever's hosting it or beta's main character the issue is a lot of times people are forced ideas like last of us to me was a great game part two was still good i didn't like the way they introduced certain things but anyway not not I, i'm not trying to spoil that but it still is a good game overall and i didn't care about i just wanted a good story and that's what i was happy with now with this said what are you going to do like to force like you basically force an ideas that are unnecessary. Just make a great game and you don't have to worry about that. Forcing an idea is gonna make people turn off and don't play the game and go right back to the other game. Look at the political landscape now. I mean when you force an idea, guess what people do? The opposite. Just drop a good uh, drop a good game and let people pick. To assume that players do want new stories and that if we bring joy to our broad audience it's going to encompass our core audience as well like representation is this abstract idea we're seeing it as this weird kind of thing that we can paint over what we're currently doing but if we start having these conversations as facets of narrative as facets of marketing as gameplay as art i think that we're actually going to be able to move beyond it because when we sequester advocacy into this one series what we risk is like preaching to the choir, and while you guys already know this because you're here, what's old to us can be innovative to somebody else. So the goal, as you can see, is to reshape the industry to fit their new world image. They view white male players as the devil and want nothing more than to change the landscape to excommunicate and remove them from the industry as well as when it comes to representation. And it's very bizarre that of all the ways she uses to explain what she hates, she uses the term picky babies. This entire group is creepy with their wording. Weird ghost, baby ghost, sweet baby, picky baby, even some of the other companies they started up like there's ghoul school as well, just very similar terminology being used here. But honestly, it's very fitting as well, because up until recently, for many of you, these people were exactly that. They were ghosts. You couldn't see them, you couldn't explain exactly what was wrong, but you could definitely feel as if there was a presence lingering around you. Something was wrong with the games you were playing. You couldn't necessarily put your finger on it, but you knew in your soul that there was something at work that you couldn't see that was contorting and transforming the very fabric of this medium that you love so much. But if these weirdos are ghosts, then fellas, we've all become Ghostbusters overnight. And it's up to us to find and locate these spectral weirdos wherever we can find them and rid this industry of this rot. 
but it seems that the rod has already taken hold. And I remember Chris Kindred, who is that narrative designer who openly promotes that they're attached to weird ghosts and all of that, is the very same individual who originally attempted to get the user who made the Steam Curator tool banned off of Steam to begin with. So a progenitor of Sweet Baby and Weird Ghost attempted to strong-arm Steam into banning someone they didn't agree with because they exposed them for who they really are. Isn't that just fascinating? But there's something that's been bothering me ever since this all... Before he goes on, like I've been trying to say, like, if you want more diverse in video games, just make a great game, and you don't have to really do too much, like... Majority of people just want great content, great things, whatever. I can go to TV shows where, hey, it might have been different, but it was still great. AKA, like, I don't know if y'all into, like, The Shy, Chicago, all these other shows, whatever. Do I like every part about it? No, but they're still good. Look at Power. I can go down a list, and guess what? They were great. And now you're talking about in the gaming world, like, look at the screen in the background. You have Final Fantasy and look at Barrett on the game. He's a great character. And I still enjoy the game regardless of what I'm playing with. I just want a good story. Now, if you want to do that, I think in my mind, I won't be surprised they're trying to, hold on one second, hijack some IPs and then use those to make stories. Because that's what I've seen in comic books like Superman and so on. They hijack the IP and then introduce whatever they want in there. And then to me, that's the downside. Like, make your own IP and, and sell it. If it's good, people will buy it. If not, that tells you something. Began, which is this one tweet by another person who works at Sweet Baby. I've covered them before. Their username on Twitter is Lego Butts. Anyway, they said this and people seem to have glossed over it. Lego Butts said this in regard to the Steam tool and how it collects information. Which, listen, I'm not sure who uses curator lists. My guess is it's people who would never ever buy the games any of us work on, except they do, and don't list those particular games here. But there's just nothing preventing this even though it's clearly not what curators are for. Except they do and don't list those particular games here. Huh. So it's very likely that there are still many games out there right now being sold and played that have been involved with Sweet Baby, Ghosts, and whatnot and are not publicly displaying their names or involvement. So, like the ghosts they are, they're still corrupting things without players even knowing to begin with. Now, what could those games be? Sadly, I don't know. Yet anyway, as of the making of this video. But it would be a shame if someone watching this was to run names like Eileen Holoka, Kim Belair, or Chris Kindred through the credits of recent releases to see if their names pop up anywhere. It's just a thought, of course, but who knows, maybe something could pop up. But it's become very be clear that this make-believe agenda that people out. like Kindred, Lego, and others swear doesn't exist seems to be a very real thing that absolutely does. And of course, another tweet I've seen circulating is this one showing other companies that are also directly tied to Sweet Baby and Weird Ghost as well. It's going to take time to sift through all of these, but there's some very eyebrow-raising names on that list. Black Girl Gamers, yeah, those are the same people who were contracted by Square Enix when they worked on Forspoken. Gamer X is a big one too, I'll have to look into that one in a future video. And then there's Anita Sarkeesian when her name keeps popping up too. And look at that, Infinite Ammo, Weird Ghost, and Game... I did hear about black girls gaming and their drama and we call it dropping cease and desist on people, etc. So before I start reacting to this, I was trying to do some homework, like look at what's going on. And yeah, it seemed like this is spreading across all the wars. So, well, I won't be surprised some of the game in the future you buy and you have to ask for a refund or something. Space. All of these are controlled by Eileen Holoka and Faber as well. There's another name on that list as well, Cozy Comet Games. Where have we seen that before? Oh yeah, they were on the infographic when Weird Ghost was celebrating all the startup companies they helped fund, and there it is, right there. Cozy Comet Games, as plain as day, so that's another company created by the sweet baby. So how deep does this rabbit hole go? But this is very interesting, my friends. Very interesting indeed. At least it's good that I can say that we're not crazy at all and actually we were right all along instead. 
I've had plenty of Reddit threads saying I'm a conspiracy theorist, that I'm this hate-mongering person, but it's very nice indeed to know that I've been right all along. And they can gaslight me, Yellow Flash, and many others all they want, but the truth is that we were right. We aren't crazy, and we aren't lying. And in actuality, it's these groups instead that are the ones who are lying, and they can try to smear our names, but the devil is bathing in the sunlight, my friends. And it's safe to say that they can't hide anymore, because while the devil does try to convince the world it doesn't exist, it looks like the public isn't believing their lies anymore. Finally, I just want to quickly go over the Warner Bros thing, but apparently after Suicide Squad blew up and died, Warner has decided it's going to double down on live service elements instead of rejecting them. And believe- Well, that's another group who just <sighs> ruined a whole bunch of stuff. Like between them or Disney, yeah, they ruined some easy hitters like Superman movies, the comics, the video games. <sighs> well, I'm glad I'm into anime, so I had that industry hasn't been hit yet hard, or, you know, whatever, but, yeah, I'm basically glad I'm in that field. Please, their future is not one-and-done games like Hogwarts Legacy, which, mind you, sold over 22 million copies and was the best-selling game of 2023. But never mind that, Warner thinks that is not the way to go even though its success proves that that's what people want. Instead, we need more Suicide Squads because that's the future apparently, especially considering how bad it did and nobody wanted it. These people are idiots, dude. But what it means to me more than anything is that Warner Bros. would rather double down on a failed product spearheaded by Swede Baby than create a profitable product like Hogwarts Legacy which to our knowledge anyway was not touched by the baby. But well, maybe it was, and Lego Butts outed that to a degree. We don't know yet. I can't wait till the internet discovers more, but it's proving that time and again, as much as they tell us we're crazy and wrong, we keep being proven right. The baby is exposed, the ghosts are no longer invisible, and they're afraid, fellas. And I know I say this a lot, but it's true, and that is that we are absolutely winning. So thank you for watching. So... So far, everything he's been saying seems legit. I mean, if you want to say he's wrong or going down the rabbit hole, he shows the evidence. So, I mean, do I agree 100% with everything he said? No. But do I agree with majority of what he said? Yeah. Most of the stuff he's shown is, seems legit to me. Now, do I, like I said, for me, the basically the God of War stuff is the only thing I'm like, okay. But everything else basically made sense and on top of that like he showed evidence now i'm probably have to keep looking and figure out more and see more and then that's a whole nother video but so far hey i'm not surprised like i did a video on the ign and the resident evil and i've seen some stuff that made me go like i'm not surprised and as you see more people in these fields you're gonna see more of this over time like I remember when the creator of Dragon Ball Z died, and then they just tried to poo poo on him. And I'm like, the reason I'm not saying his name because I don't want to butcher it, but yeah. So, this is what got me started. But anyway, if you like my video, don't forget like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, and give me your opinion in the comment section, especially if you made it this far. And with that said, peace.